Hi, I'm Steve Good, and welcome to my Scroll Saw Workshop. Tonight, we're going to continue in the series of creating scroll saw patterns with CorelDRAW. In this case, I'm using CorelDRAW X5. You should be able to follow along just 5 and X4, and even some of the older versions, although things on the screen may not appear exactly uh, like you see me do them. I'm going to jump right into this pattern tonight because this one's going to take a little while, and we're going to add another tool to our arsenal uh, above and beyond what I've already shown you. Now, you may want to go back and view the previous videos first because I'm going to kind of glance over the tools that we've already talked about. I'll try to describe them as much as possible, but I don't want to run out of time in this video. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to go over here and grab my ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw an ellipse on the screen by clicking the left mouse button and dragging. In this case, I want this ellipse to be a perfect circle that's 7 inches by 7 inches. So I can come up here to my object size, click inside of that, and this is the horizontal size, and, or the, what you would call the width, and this is the height. I want it to be 7 inches by 7 inches. So I type 7 into both of those, hit the Enter key, I now have a perfect circle that's 7 inches on in diameter. I'm going to click on the Pick tool, and with that circle selected, I'm going to type the P on the keyboard, and the P key centers the circle or whatever object we have selected in the middle of the page. Okay, now the intent of this pattern tonight is to teach you a feature of the text tool. So I'm going to go over here and click on the text tool, and you'll see that we have in our bar up here the ability to select a text and the size. In this case, because I've worked on this pattern already, I already have my cartoonist font selected, and I have it set at 60. Now, you may not have this font. You probably won't, and if you don't, don't worry about it. Just use any heavy weight font that you have and set it to about 60 points for the size. And you may have to adjust that a little bit to compensate for how it looks on your pattern. Okay, I'm going to click on the screen with my left mouse button to get my text cursor, and I'm going to type in a sentence. There's the text that we want to add to this circle, at least the first line of it. I'm going to go up here to my pick tool, and with my pick tool, when I move over the text, you can see it turns to a crosshair, and I can move this text anywhere on the screen I want. That's with the left mouse button. If I click on this text with the right mouse button and I drag down to this circle, as soon as I hit the edge of this circle, you can see that the uh, mouse cursor turns to a circle with a crosshair inside of it. When I let go of the right mouse button, a menu pops up and one of the menu items that we can select is Fit Text to Path. We're going to go down and click on that and you'll see that our text has now conformed to the outside of this uh, circle that we have drawn on the screen. You also can see that we have some garbage up here, and this is a byproduct of this tool, and it's really easy to get rid of. Just come over to your scroll bar and double click, and it'll redraw the screen and get rid of any garbage you might have on there. And that will work with uh, any time you end up with uh, what looks like ghosting on the screen or some character that's not supposed to be there. You can just double click and it'll redraw it. Okay, now we've got this text conformed to the top of the circle, but if you look real close, you can see that there's a little bit of gap between the circle and the text. And when we get done with this pattern, we're actually going to have this text welded to the circle, so we can't have that gap. So luckily, CorelDRAW has a couple tools up here, uh, Distance from Path and Offset. The Distance from Path is actually the gap that we're talking about right here. So if we click on this down arrow, we can move our text closer to the path of this circle, and in this case it's overlapping just enough that we should be able to weld it to the circle. Okay, that's the first part of the text we want to add. Now what we need to do is add some text to go along the bottom of the screen. And there's the text that we're going to add to the bottom. What a stupid question. Okay, again, if we use our right mouse button and we move up to the edge of that circle, you can see our crosshairs appear. When we let go, we want to do... Uh, let's see, we're going to have to 
change this here just a second. Let me redraw this because we didn't get the tool that we needed. Let me click up here and I've got this text uh, still attached to this circle. I want to break it apart and I think that'll make this work okay for us. So if I go up here to my arrange menu and say break text apart, then it will actually make this text not a part of the circle anymore. You see when I click on it, the bounding box is just around the text. Now I think when we click on this text here and we drag it up with our right mouse button and let go, we'll get our fit text to path. So let's click on that. Again, this is actually a ghosted image that's not supposed to be here. So if we go over here, double click on this, it'll clean it up. But obviously we had a problem. It actually put the text at the top of the circle again, and that's not where we want it. We want it down at the bottom. So we can go back up to our distance from path and offset again. And in this case, we want to use the offset. And if we move this text by clicking on these buttons right here, you can see that the text will move around the circle. In this case, we want to move all the way to the bottom. So a quick way of doing that is to put your mouse pointer right in between these two buttons, click with your left mouse button and drag, and you can see it'll drag the text around a little quicker. You could just go ahead and click on the buttons if you want, and that works fine. Uh, but sometimes it's easier just to drag it around like this. And we want to get it eh, kind of close to where we need it, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to move it again anyway. Okay, now you can see that we have the text at the bottom, but it's upside down and backwards. We actually want it to be the other way. So with this selected, we have two more tools up here in our text bar. One is mirror text horizontally and one is mirror text vertically. So if we click on the mirror text horizontally, you can see it's flipped it in the horizontal direction, but now we need to flip it in the vertical direction also. So when we do that, now you can see we have our text in the orientation we want it, but unfortunately it moved up to the inside of the circle, so we've got to move that out. So if we go back up here to our distance from path and click on that, you can see that we can move this text back away from where we want it, and we want it to still overlap the circle, but just barely. So right about there is where we want it. You can see we're moved around, so again we have to come up to our offset again, and click on our offset until we get it lined up about where we want it. And we'll say right about there. And another byproduct of this is sometimes it tends to want to bunch the text up a little bit together. And you can see up here we have better spacing of the letters. So with this text still selected, if we come over here to our shape tool, our shape tool gives us uh, a feature or text with these two little arrows here on each side once we have the text selected. And if you click with your left mouse button and drag on these arrows, it'll actually space the letters apart farther and we want them to match a little closer to what we have in the top. So let's say right about there. That looks pretty good. Okay, to fish or not to fish, what a stupid question. That's the pattern we want, but obviously we need a little more than that. So again, when I click on this, I want to go up and do break text apart. And the reason I did that is I want to be able to just select the circle. Now I'm going to go back to the compound tool, which we've used in a previous video. So I'm going to go on this part pretty quick. Over here with the contour tool, with it selected, I want to contour this circle on the inside, so I've got the inside contour selected here on this button, and I want about a quarter of an inch, which I'm already almost at, so we'll set this at a quarter of an inch, and you can see i got a contour inside that circle. And if you remember from the previous video when we talked about contours, it's really not uh, two, two, it's really two parts. It's not a circle, so we have to break this apart. So if I go up to Arrange, Break Contour Group Apart, now we've actually created two different objects here instead of one object with a contour. We can go over with our Pick Tool. We can do our Back Minus Front. Really don't see the change, but if we color it in, you can see now we have a circle here that we can actually put some graphics into. Okay, so we got our to fish or not to fish. What a stupid question. We've got our contoured circle in the middle. We can use our pick tool to lasso this whole group back up to our weld tool that we've talked about previously. Click on weld. You can see now we have all of our text welded to our circle. So I went through that pretty fast, but again, the part of the pattern that I'm really talking about here is how to make the text conform to the circle. Uh, so the rest of it, you know, you may want to go back to the other videos and watch. Okay, we need something in the middle of this, so luckily I have a graphic over here that I've been hiding from you. And I'm going to put that in the middle of this 
pattern. Somewhere right about there, I think, is where I like it. Uh, and we can move this around to get what we want, but I think I'm going to go with something. Maybe I'll pull this down a little bit, move it over. And I'm using the arrow keys to move this around. So let's go right about there. Uh, another thing I want to do is I'll, I, I want to make some changes over here where this fin, I want it to actually look like it's in front of this circle. So I'm actually going to go over here to my object manager and I'm going to take this and move it to the top so I can get the fish on top. And I'm going to take my zoom tool. I'm going to scroll into here and I actually want these slits in the fin to show through. So a real quick tick to get around that is to just take our pen tool and we're going to draw around these fins, or at least the slits in the fin. And what I'm actually going to do is use this drawing that I just did to remove part of this circle. So uh, if I click on my pick tool and I have this selected, I hold down the shift key to also select the curve. Then when I do the uh, back minus front, you can see that now the slits are showing up inside that circle. And I actually want to get rid of this little piece right here too. So let me do the same thing again. I'm going to draw a little piece around this. And this is just a little trick of sometimes things you want to add. Hold down the shift key, click on the circle, back minus front. Oops, I messed that up. I didn't want that piece to disappear. So let's go over here and take this and move it up to here. And again, we can select our object that we just drew. Hold down the shift key, click on the circle, back minus front, and you can see now all these fins appear to be in front of the circle. Now when we go back and do our lasso and weld this all together, you can see that it looks like the fin is actually in front of that circle a little bit, which is a little closer to the way I want it. Now the other thing is I actually want this to overlap, so I'll probably back up and clean this up a little bit. But that gives you an idea of exactly what I was trying to do with this video. Um, the whole video or the intent of this video was to do the text on a curve. And again, you can do this text along any path. So it could have just been a, we could have had our freehand tool and drawn a curve like this. And we could do the same thing by fitting that text along that curve. So any, any curve we can fit our text along. You simply use the right mouse button to drag the text onto the path let go and do fit text to path. Just that simple. I'm going to stop this video here. I'll clean this pattern up a little bit and make it look a little better and I'll post it uh, along with this video on the blog. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop and we'll see you in the next tutorial.